What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are working on something totally different. As you can see, it's not the Audi, it's not the Q, it's not the diesel. It's a 2016 F-150 with the five liter Coyote. We are gonna be replacing the rotors and the pads. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it safely without dying. So let's get started. So first things first, you're gonna need a jack. If you're new to this, you're gonna think, okay, where do I lift this thing? I don't know, this is a lot of stuff. I want to lift it safely, I don't want to lift it on the floorboard and then poke the jack right through. So if you come down you'll see the frame rail and you'll see a little arrow right here. As long as you're on this frame rail, you're pretty good. And always, whatever you do when you're lifting a vehicle, use a friggin jack stand. The next thing you want to do is jack the vehicle up. I always do like a few inches off the ground. You don't need to go higher or else you're gonna be struggling to get that wheel back on after. And it's a pain in the ass. Luckily these have a stud, not like European cars where there's no stud and you just gotta kinda of line up the hole and then throw the bolts in. Next thing to take the wheels off, you're gonna need a 21 millimeter socket. Pretty straightforward. Hopefully you know how to take off wheel bolts. If not, maybe this isn't the job for you. The next thing you want to get is a 13 millimeter socket and a bungee cord. The bungee cord is so you can hang the caliper to the top arm so that you don't put any strain on your brake line. Sometimes it helps to have a tray, a little magnetic tray. There you go. Alright, the next is you can either, sometimes you get lucky like this and the brake caliper comes right off nice and easy, or other times you're gonna have to get a flat head and just kind of pry the caliper out. So once you have the caliper and the brake pads off, next you're going to want to remove the caliper bracket. And this one is always a pain in the ass to remove. You're going to need a 21 mil socket and then back here, right there. So you put your 21 mil on there and you go to town. This is where you need the big boy. tough for that. Now the biggest problem with these is the rotor rust to the hub so you're gonna have to get a hammer. If you're lucky they'll come out easy if not you're gonna have to smack it. So what I like to do, see all this rust here, right? 
start cleaning it up, go around, clean it all up, and then after, once you're done, and she's nice and clean, coat it all in Never Sees, so this way it makes it nice and easy for the next time. When you tighten these caliper bracket bolts, remember how tight they were. Once you have the caliper bracket back on, brake clean. Clean up any areas you may have touched. I always do this before I put them on too, just so you can get to the back properly. When it comes to pads, you'll see these old tabs. Put your flathead in there, take them off, front and back. And you always know it's a better kit when they give you brand new hardware. Some kits won't, so before you take them off, double check that your kit comes with them. Now it's a little darker, but as you can see, I'm on the opposite side. Now for the caliper bracket, these tabs again, you can either put them on now or put them on after once the caliper bracket's back on. So with these tabs, as you can see right here, put this little tiny piece in first on the top and then click this down. And then you should click in like that. So when you buy premium pads, more than often they'll come with some lubricant, some silicone lubricant, whatever they want to use. I always take the sliders out. You always want to make sure these are free flowing. If they're not, it's going to cause your caliper to drag and then that is the worst because then you'll be eating your brake pads. So just pull them out a little bit. Do that. I like to spin them around. That's in, and then the same with the bottom one. And where the brake pads are, where they touch, and the sliders, I put a little bit on the bottoms here, like that. Anywhere that metal metal. They have shims, so they shouldn't make sound. I mean, the backing plate's pretty nice. I don't know. Some people actually put them on the back where the pistons touch. But I'm gonna take the chance. You just put your pads on. Sometimes they're tricky, you just push down like that. There we go. Flipped in. Just like that. After you've done everything, put all your pads in, your rotors, your caliper carrier. Double check your bolts, always. And then when you come up to the caliper here, you'll notice the caliper pistons will be a lot higher and they won't clear your new pads. So what you gotta do is use a C-clamp like this and compress the pistons back in. I don't know if I can get it on film like this, but one-handed. So you just compress it. Some people actually have a tool. I don't have the tool on me. It goes in between, pushes up against here, boom, it's done. But you can use your brake pad, just rotate, pistons will go down. When it comes to putting the caliper back on, these slider pins are going to stick out and they're going to stop at the top here. So make sure you push them down 
And then once you get the caliper on, like this, don't pinch your fingers. There you go. So now it's lined up. Put your caliper pins back in, your bolts. Comes time to put the caliper bolts back in. You'll notice sometimes these caliper guide pins will start rotating. So just hold it, tighten it up by hand. You may have to just hold your finger tight and you should be good. Sometimes you have to throw a flathead in here and then just tighten up the bolts here. And you'll be good. Like that. Let's see, the bottom one will probably spin. No, okay, good. And only do these to 26 foot pounds. 